world's affair. I am going to be speaking about the authentication and adaptive security for the domain name system. And so, just a brief outline of the things I'm going to be discussing. Um, we'll be looking at how the DNS actually works and then some vulnerabilities of the initial domain name system and also trying to understand the DNS SSE which is the domain name um, security that we currently have and also the current state of DNS SSE valid validation around the world and especially in Africa and then to the future we're talking about the future recommendations and how we can move forward. So the domain name system, how does it really work? So the DNS primarily translates host names to IP addresses or IP addresses for host names. So basically it works like when you have a, um, a web address into your browser the DNS basically helps connecting your web address to the IP address and getting you the information you need. So the DNS does this um, using the resolver. On your browser, there is the resolver that transmits it to what we call a recursive resolver, which exists in the DNS system. And the recursive resolver basically goes through all the servers to find out the one that actually consists of the information you're looking for. So basically it goes through a hierarchy, starts from the root servers and to the other servers. So basically this works in a way such that when the resolvers get information once, it stores it in a cache so that next time it has to move, it basically accesses the web address you're trying to get through the cache so that you don't have to go through the whole resolving process anymore. So that's a brief description of what the domain name system really represents. Now, what are the vulnerabilities of the DNS? Um, first of all, to, to describe the basic domain name system that was developed in the 1980s, um, the internet was much smaller then, and security was not really a primary consideration in its design. So the open resolvers really allows clients that are not part of the administrative domain to use the server for performing recursive name resolution. Basically, anyone can access the DNS system and the wrong queries on it. So uh, the effect of this basically is that the the system is vulnerable to attacks, mostly um, attacks like denial of service and then distributed denial of service. So we'll talk more about that and yeah. So as as a result, when the requesting resolver sends a query to the authoritative name server, the resolver has no way to verify the authenticity of the response. And this is actually one of the major fields. So I'm going to describe a couple of vulnerabilities in the DNS system. I think the first one is catch poison. Uh, the catch poison attacks, which occurs when an attacker sends a falsified and usually spoofed um, information to a DNS resolver. So usually, uh, I know a couple of us might be familiar with a situation where you go probably to a bank website and then you discover that you're actually going to the wrong one. Basically because these attackers have access to a spoofed data of what you should be receiving on a normal, on a normal query and then they send it to the domain name system so that when you query it saves in your cache and from there the next time you query it doesn't go to the root server to look for it, basically because it has been poisoned with the wrong website. So usually, attackers use this to get information, your bank details, and then they go around accessing your bank accounts through this. 
So I think the other one is the application and reflection attack. This basically involves sending DNS messages to multiple open resolvers using forged source IP addresses. So this can be used to attack companies basically sending um, messages that the companies didn't send using their IP addresses. It just takes some editing. And then um, this can actually cause a breakdown in the server and in their technology and then businesses can move on with this. And the third one uh, is the resource utilization attack, which can also happen whereby a, the attacker will consume all available resources to negatively impact the operation of the open resolver of the domain system. So uh, it's important that we actually provide some level of security for the open resolver, which brings us to the development of the domain name security system. So DNSSEC, um, the DNSSEC basically supplements the hierarchical nature of the DNS with what we call the cryptographic characters. So with this, we are able to ensure that the DNS can ensure authenticity of whatever query is being run on the system, which uh, makes it more secure. So it uses this through cryptographic signatures and they are published in more secure formats such that no, not anyone can just easily access it. And then, um, of course, we know part of the effect of this is that it consumes, it uses more uh, bytes in memory. So for the normal DNS, we have five, one, two bytes, but for the DNS set, it uses up to 4,000 and 96 bytes. Yeah, so for the adopt adoption rates um, and validation rates, around the world it is considered to be 20%. But for Africa, um, the DNS SSC validation, uh, which is the use, is picked at 22% of users in the mid 2016. And now we have seen that it has declined to 12% at 2018. But well, in 2019, it has shifted back to 18% adoption in 2019. So why uh, is this data from 2018? Why are people not interested in using this um, system that seems to actually provide more security for the DNS system? Um, some people believe that one of the arguments for the people who do not want to use the DNS SSC is the fact that it increases the size and inefficiencies of the system considering that at times some um, legitimate queries might be blocked out. And also, uh, validation also takes additional time, and also the costs of this might actually overweigh the potential benefits to businesses. So making them not adopt this security measure. Then um, I think for many who use it, who use the DNS SSC, which is highly recommended, these are people who consider internet security a priority, and these are people who consider trust from consumer a priority as well. And also, one um, interesting thing to consider is the fact that the DNS SSC is a work in progress. Even though not totally perfect, issues are being worked on by engineers every day, and we believe that this might actually be something that will ensure more security for the internet space. So, uh, for future recommendation, we might have to actually ask ourselves how important is the security of our domain name space compared to the costs that is to afford the companies managing this system. So, uh, to people like you and I, who are potential risk bearers for this situation, we should always think of supporting a more secure and a more trusted domain name system. So my recommendation, which I believe we all should think about, is the fact that for securing the DNS, there's really no plan B beyond the DNS SSE. We have to ensure the DNS security is being supported, is being proposed, even by end users as well. And we should know that operational experience will guide further refinement of the DNS security.
share the tools and techniques in the coming few, in the coming years. Thank you very much.